totality! Totality! Oh my God! Look at that! That was the moment of excitement that went viral from eclipse chaser Mike Kentrinakis viewing a total solar eclipse from an airplane over the Pacific in 2016. That same excitement is building for millions as the biggest celestial event in years is less than two weeks away. America's total solar eclipse will darken skies along a narrow path from Texas to Maine on April the 8th. The highly anticipated event one that you need to plan for, so we brought in the most passionate Eclipse fan we know. Mike, thank you so much for being with us thank in you, totality man. for the studio. Before we get into preparations, right, just talk about your passion. I mean, this is just an incredible opportunity that you've chased across the world so many times. Uh, yes, it started when I was 14 years old when I saw my first Eclipse in 1979 in Winnipeg, Manitoba. and. I, I didn't know what got to me, but I said, this is really, really interesting. And I said, this is something, I need to see it again. But I didn't get my second chance to see totality until 1998 in Aruba. And then it was perfectly clear skies, and I was just floored by it. I couldn't believe it. And after that, I really got hooked. I went 1999, and whenever I could afford to go, and mm -hmm. kept going around the world, literally around the world, and saw 14 total solar eclipses. This would be my 15th. This would be... 15. So how do you prepare for this? I mean, you, you mentioned something interesting to me before, the forecast. How does that play a role into how you plan? Well, the, the forecast is a huge uh, factor, uh, especially with this eclipse. This eclipse we're calling uh, the mobile eclipse because it's uh, in the continent uh, of North America from Mexico to uh, Canada. And you could drive, and this is why I'm going to Carbondale. Carbondale is midway, 1,000 miles to Eagle Pass and 1,000 miles up to Montreal. So if there's any chance that, you know, if the weather is clear somewhere, I could drive. And if I plan it out within 72 hours and try to see, I can tr drive it in case of terrible conditions. Right. Well, th that's a great point. I mean, I, there are so many cities that are underneath totality, right? How do you pinpoint exactly where to go? So for you, you're saying this is like that middle point where you could get to a couple different areas given the closer we get to the forecast. Yes, yes. Uh, I like to look within 72 hours. People are looking now into outlooks. Often those outlooks do not exactly match to what they'll be. And I've, I don't find it as constructive to spend my time focusing on that necessarily, because I already know where I'm going. Right. And I'm going there for many reasons, because I'm being involved with Carbondale. I went there the first time. I mean, it's a great thing that the eclipse is happening there twice, which yeah. is kind of rare. So to get to see the eclipse twice in the same spot is unusual. So, and they're a great group of people at Carbondale University, and we're working with NASA EDGE. And we're also doing television coverage, coast to coast, from Mazatlan, Mexico, all the way to Newfoundland, Canada. So that's something also I'm involved, I know about, I'm right. passionate about, and the eclipse. So it's unique, unique for me. So I'm looking forward to it. And is there anything in particular about this upcoming total solar eclipse that's so exciting or unique? Well, th this eclipse is uh, longer. It's uh, four minutes as opposed to two minutes and 38 seconds mm -hmm. last time. It will make it darker. Uh, it also is, um, it, it's going over such a populated area. That, that's a major thing for, for a lot of people. Right. But in terms of the eclipse itself, it's just longer, darker. It has different effects than a shorter one does. So uh, in, in that case, it's, again, it's, it's impossible to describe it, but it's different in that way. And that's why every single eclipse is different. It has its own signature. Yeah. And so... I know we have this one happening in just two weeks, but the next one isn't until about 2044. I know you tr plan to travel, but there are other ones that are happening across the world sooner <laughs> than yes. the 2040s. Do you plan to travel? I hope so. I hope I can, I can do so. Yes, it's over in uh, Europe and uh, in Africa. Uh, in Egypt uh, or Tunisia, and uh, they just keep going on and on. Yeah. They're, they're, they're every it's just 18 an months. Incredible passion. Like, stay with me because we talk about the forecast, right? So let's give a little bit of a glimpse inside what the forecast could look like for some of our viewers because, yes, there is a lot of planning that goes into this travel. So whether you live along the path of totality or in areas that will even see just the partial eclipse, you won't see much if the clouds get in the way. So, Mike, as you join me, let's take a look at the the forecast here. So this is just a, an overall scale, right? It's not exact science. And as you and I both know, it's likely going to change. But given what we know right now, 
there's pretty high confidence that in these green areas along the 95 corridor and then out, say, over parts of the southern plains, cities like Dallas, Little Rock, maybe even St. Louis, could see a better opportunity of less clouds to block their view. Wow, this is pretty interesting. This is my first time looking at the eclipse. And the air, it's ex exactly the opposite of what the long-term predictions were in the, in the climate. And what I've been saying to people is that anything can happen in right. this path. It's unique to this path is the weather. And there's so many different cities here. So when you, when you look at this and you think, okay, there could be a better chance for cloud cover up across, say, the Great Lakes, how would you think that would impact maybe how people should view the eclipse themselves because you've seen the eclipse in an airplane right so yes. the view where there's no clouds obstructing it versus being on the ground well one thing i do like is that when you get to the eclipse path toward the end the sun and moon are lower in the sky so it makes it more relative to the ground and it, it gets a little bit of the moon illusion it's not that low but it actually looks larger so uh up in the north to see it in such beautiful places with the falls and the lakes it's it's really ideal to see an eclipse all right well we're going to be watching this forecast closely and we're going to be following you mike kentrinakis thank you so much for being with us on thank Fox you Jerry. my pleasure